Okay, turn 34, and, uh, well, Punchmaster continues to live up to his name. Despite being blind, uh, he remains largely invincible. Um, he just, just ran over this province. There was nothing to stop him here, frankly. And you can see, I think, yeah, they were just scripted to retreat in any case. So he buffed up and then literally didn't actually fight because the forces of armor were all routed before any battle took place, which is fine and to be expected. I did have a Geronti killed by a ghost in Nashon, which is, ugh, okay. And uh, Sarometia is launching an invasion. So they have 14 Inaris at about 60 cataphracts, and they are forming their Skelespam communion and then spamming skeletons with their 14 Inaris. And we can see here that, of course, spamming skeletons does not affect them much. When you have that many Inaris and they're all D2, spamming skeletons is not a problem. So, this is a problem because that army will require Punchmaster to stop. Uh, Punchmaster or possibly one of my thugs. So I do have one fully geared Polomarch thugs, Stab of Manicles, and I have one partially geared uh, Polomarch thug, Spartan Kikates. Now, Stab of Manicles... Uh, I have blessed. I have cast the Blessing of the God Slayer upon him. So he has Halt Heretic, and he also has much higher attack and defense skills than normal. He... Uh, he might potentially be able to stop that Skelospam army. So let's, let's do a little bit of a swap here. We're going to swap off his Copper Plate. We're going to give him a Black Steel Plate instead. That'll kick his protection up. We'll give the uh, Copper Plate to Spartan Kikates who is carrying two amulets of anti-magic because I want to hand one off to uh, Punchmaster at some point here, but I probably, probably it's not worth doing that, to be honest. So Stab of Manicles doesn't need to be carrying gems either because there aren't any mages up there to use them. And so he will hop up here to Copper Canyons. And I'll put one point of defense in Copper Canyons to provide a distraction. So Stab of Manicles does regenerate. So he'll regenerate four hit points around. He has 20 protection. Um, so yeah, he'll cast Iron Skin, uh, Iron Will can probably be later because those mages are not trying to, to mind burn him or whatever. So let's go Iron Skin, Temper Flesh, that should more or less keep him safe from skeletons. He'll need Earth Power as well, so let's summon Earth Power and then let's drop a Fire Shield if we can. He does have magic resistance 20, so he should be okay against the occasional mind burn and such. And yeah, with that script, um, and with the vine shield active as well, he can probably he can probably handle skele spam. At least I hope he can. So the goal here basically is with the iron skin and the temper flesh. The iron skin will kick his protection up to almost 30. And then the Temper Flesh will have damage. And so the goal is, with that and the really high defense skill, to lower, and the uh, the Vine Shield, of course, entangling people who attack him, to lower the amount of damage he takes low enough that he can regenerate his way through it. And then, if he can do that, and he can stay awake with Earth Power, then he can, uh, basically, he can just slowly crush the army with uh, Retreat Math, with the Retreat Algorithm. Now, of course, he will route. They will route first because they're attacking me, so that'll be fine. So let's let's move these guys out of the way. We'll send Stabamanicles up here to defend this province. If they come in, he'll fight them. He might die. Um, the Halt Heretic won't help him much. I don't know. With the regeneration, he could probably... With the regeneration, high protection, high defense skill... And the Vine Shield, I think against Skeletons, he can probably swing it. It'll kind of depend on what the uh, what the Erinias start doing off script, but that is why I want him way in the back. And we're going to script him to attack closest instead of rear. So Iron Skin, Temper Flesh, I think he'll get those two off before the Cavalry reach him, if the Cavalry attack right away. And then Summon Earth Power, he might not get off in time. Uh, actually, to be honest, the Fire Shield... The Fire Shield is useful to burn through the Skeletons, but the point of this is not necessarily to burn through the Skeletons, so instead, why don't you drop Iron Will at that point? 
Okay. So yeah, so Iron Skin, which will only cost him 10. Temper Flesh, which will cost him 10. Uh, summon Earth Power, and then Iron Will, which will cost him 10. And so he should be fine on Fatigue still. Great. So that'll be the plan. We'll send Stab Manicles to try and halt that attack. If he can, then that'll be a huge boon. Uh, basically, our problem here is just we're, being, we're just being nibbled to death. Uh, I can't stop. We're stopping this, but over here we, ha we have to have sizable forces in at least three or four places at this point, and we don't have that many sizable forces. Now, there was a battle in Pergamy, which we should watch. This was our first real victory against a Kalamite stack. So, uh, this is the, the full Kalam army. They've got all their casters here. They've got their Ahuranis. They've got their god. Um, all of this stuff. Over here on the other side, we have a Nephil Turbo Communion. And, of course, we have the Line of Giants. Now, here's one issue. This area is actually the heaviest concentration of HP on the field because of the way uh, Nephil has deployed. And this is something a lot of people don't think about, and it's probably something I should have mentioned, but um, the Gigias, especially when they're in the same square as Blood Slaves, have almost the same HP as Nephil Giants. And if you look at the Nephil Giants are spread out in a line, whereas the Gigias are boxed up. So the way, uh, I'm not sure if I've actually ever technically explained this. The way spellcasting decisions are made is the AI simulates casting a spell three times uh, and then it picks the spell which, on average, did had the most effect. So what that means is, if you have a line like this, and a box, um, the AI will, with evocations, will target the box. Uh, because even if there's technically more HP in one of these squares, because like these Nephil Giants are 66 hit points and the, the Gigas are only 37, uh, even so, since Thunderstrikes scatter, on average, Thunderstriking into this area scores more damage than Thunderstriking into this area because of the scatter. So they will still target the Thunderstrikes at this square most of the time. That being so, um, well, watch what happens. So uh, he's summoning a ton of elementals of all kinds, spending a ton of gems on that. Everybody's moving forward. The Horde of Skeletons is happening. Here come the Thunderstrikes. Gig just getting paralyzed and killed all over the shop. Uh, here come the birds. Now the birds, fortunately, were mostly zoned out by the Skeletons. More Thunderstrikes coming down. This was exactly what we'd hoped would happen with the skeletons. More Thunderstrikes, yet more Thunderstrikes. Some of the Gigas are surviving the Thunderstrikes, some are not. Many are not, in fact. But the skeletons are now swarming back to destroy the birds. Up front, uh, the fire elementals are fighting the Nephil Giants, doing a pretty good job, but the Nephil Giants are, sur or, well, they're slowly getting ground down. But at this point, the skeleton horde is enormous and unstoppable, so the, the huge hordes of skeletons just swarm forward, overwhelming the elementals by sheer numbers, and the enemy mages flee at this point. Now, of course, in fleeing, also one Jotun werewolf apparently didn't get enslaved, so he's just out here, like, doing his Jotun werewolf thing. Uh, and so we get to basically just clean up a few of the mages that didn't manage to get away in time because they were fatigued out. So, casualty-wise, that was... Ugh. Ugh. Oof. Uh, lost a Nephil Giant. I actually saw a lot more Nephil Giants than that get killed, but apparently... This is the this report is what the game actually detects. So what you see happen in the battle is not always accurate. So that's a bug. Um because I saw like a lot I, I seem to see have seen a lot of Nephil Giants die. Like let me let me double let me verify that real quick. Well maybe not. Maybe not. I guess not. I guess they all just ran back here. Okay, never mind me. I did not see a lot of Nephil Giants die. I, I saw this, uh, I saw this Nephil Jarl get his eyes cut out and himself be muted, so that was unfortunate, but then he had, he was one of the ones with no gear. Snorri is doing fine, uh, Shur is doing fine, and Stentor is doing fine. So yeah, I guess we only lost one Nephil Giant. Uh, the big loss here is nine Gigas. Gigas are expensive. That's about 1,800 gold worth of Gigas. Um, on the plus side, we killed three Aharanis, which are, of course, summons, so those cost gems, and they're disease healers and very useful in general. And we killed four Area Seraphs. Now, Area Seraphs are a lot less expensive than Gigas, so overall, monetarily, this wasn't a great trade. This was 1,800 gold of mages plus, you know, this is about 2,000 gold all told on our side, versus, I'm not sure what you'd count Aharanis are, but that's about 500, and then these guys are about 600, so about 1,100 plus three summons. Uh, monetarily, 
not a great trade, but in tactically speaking, uh, we pushed that stack back and freed up uh, Pergamy. Pergamy, which is a very, very, uh, a good, uh, it's very positive. And that army is now scattered in two locations. So now they're on the tactical back foot, which is excellent. Now, however, uh, we're also getting elfed. So you can see up here, Vanheim is coming in with surprise elf stacks. It's not much of a surprise, kind of expecting this kind of thing. But that means Arco is being chipped away and needs to go on the defensive. And Niflheim now has dangerously little territory. Like, they are struggling. Especially because all their stuff is so expensive. But we'll see what happens. Over here, I did manage to retake Digmore with Punchmaster. As we saw, we're being attacked on that side. Uh, Arco's army is rolling deeper into uh, Baratos' territory. And Baratos currently has two of their three forts under siege by Independence, which is hilarious and sad. So that was, what's that battle? In Belmar, that was the, uh, the Vans elfing us. In Takarigas, that's Storm Demons raiding. Uh, in... Oine, uh, or Oon. Oon, something like that. So let's see this. So he has a whole bunch of mystics, which he is communing up. They're carrying a whole bunch of gems, mainly fire gems. And so it looks like, except for that guy, that guy is an Earth random. So he has Earth 3... That guy's just all across the shop. Earth random, Earth astral random, fire. So we've got a little bit of a little bit of communion happening. It looks like. Uh, it looks like he only got one guy. No, he has two people scripted to communion slave. So he's got communion masters down over here. So he's a communion master. He's a communion master. He's nothing. He's not in the communion. He is a communion slave. He's a master, and he's a slave. So they're all buffing up their fire magic, uh, and they're not bothering to summon fire elementals, which is good. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, I think those fireballs only scored friendly fire, but that's okay. Uh, we've hit Thaumaturgy level 3, so we are researching up to construction level 4 at this point, which will take us a couple of turns. Uh, but construction level four will help us gear our thugs, which we desperately, desperately need. They are our only hope at this point. So um, we'll see how it goes. I'm moving Punchmaster back into my own dominion to recapture this province. Uh, and he'll clean up these provinces while this little army puts some pressure on the bulwark. Uh, should get Spartan Kikates geared out here. Uh, I need another set of Boots of the Messenger, which I don't think I'm going to get immediately, unfortunately. Um... Eight encumbrance. Ah, oh, the severe cold is hurting. And the basic encumbrance of two. Okay. So I do need... I've got the amulet of anti-magic. I also need another bottle of water. So let's forge a flask of holy water. Uh, I do have boots of giant strength. Which I can give to Spartan Kikates if he doesn't get anything else. And then he also needs a weapon, which I'm forging. And then he can do without a helmet, because he already has a perfectly functional helmet. And I don't have any real good helmets. I could give him a dragon helm to increase his morale. That wouldn't hurt. Uh, but I'm out of fire gems because my fire gem income is abysmal. Uh, I need. I actually. I actually need to ask uh, Niflheim for this province, but he doesn't have any commanders up here anymore. So yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do. In any case, that I think is going to be the turn. So we are definitely on the defensive, slowly getting ground down. We've got this huge army rolling in on this side. Lots of demons of heavenly rivers. Uh, enough Skelospam can deal with that. So that is the kind of army that Nephilim can stop. However, of course, they also have to fight down here, which is out of our dominion. And so uh, Punchmaster can't effectively fight there very well uh, until he spreads dominion himself for a while. He can probably take this province, although it has, like, uh, the number of black candles here is unsupportable. I can't deal with it. And it's a, a big part of the strategy here, clearly, is they've got all these temples, which we haven't managed to burn down effectively. So, yeah, kind of kind of going to have to deal with that. Uh, they've got a temple built in the bulwark as well, which we need to knock down. And I, of course, do not have the money to be building new temples because my income is 1,200, which for turn 34 is abysmal. Uh, much like my gem income is fairly abysmal for turn 34 as well. What is that? 17, 18, 25. Yeah, mm, mm, not great. Definitely not great. So, 
in any case, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see. We'll see if we can uh, if we can come out the other side of this somehow. I think there's still hope. Uh, it will depend on whether Arco can sufficiently crush Baratos. That's going to be a big part of it, I think. If we can take Baratos out and marginalize Saromatia a little bit more, we may be able to. I think I've been calling these guys Aranese the whole time. They're Inaris. In any case, I think if we can do, if we can manage to hold on on this side and do that. Uh, will be okay. What we need is we need Punchmaster down here to to break up this section and drive Ermor back. And we need Niflheim to crush this army. If we can do that, then there's a chance of dealing with the elves or at least forcing them to withdraw. And then uh, basically we need to roll at least eight or nine or twelve sixes in a row. But we'll see what we can do. We'll uh we're not giving up yet. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all in turn 35. Okay, turn 35. Uh, the borders are distinctly collapsing at this point. Um, I think I think this is the last hurrah. We are beyond the point of no return at this point. So we've got a large Mictlanese army coming in, a large Tianxi army coming in. Uh, I've got these two guys roaming around not doing much that's terribly useful, to be fully honest, because they have no gems or anything. Gonna see if maybe I can get them into... The, they have nowhere to go at this point. They're just gonna have to run. Paraphus is sneaking down to do what he can. Punchmaster still roaming around winning. All he does is win, win, win. Because he's incredibly strong. Overpoweredly strong. Uh, we have Spartan Kikates ready for action. Stabamanicles also ready for action. I would need more gear to gear out more uh, thugs like them, unfortunately. And I don't really have it. So Stabamanicles is gonna go over here. See if he can stop this army in its tracks. Uh... My actual troops are going to move down here to take out these barbarians, while Punchmaster clears out this province and takes back some of my death gem income, which is important to take back not only so that I have it, but to prevent uh, Ermor from having it. These guys are going to fall back, and at this point we're playing Fort Defense until we die, basically. Um, Niflheim has these Nifl Jarls, which can do a lot of work. There was a battle here against in Ulifa, actually. And if we re watch that battle in Ulifo, if we look at it, he lost one Nifl Jarl and 11 of his Nifl Giants, but the one Nifl Jarl who died was actually ungeared. So if we look at these here, we've got this guy who's mostly geared, including with shock resistance, and the Vine Shield, critically. Um, we have this guy who's also geared with the Vine Shield. We have this guy who is ungeared and terribly, terribly injured. And then we have this guy who's about, who's very, very partially geared. Uh, and if we look at what happens, you know, they they bless themselves, so they're regenerating, except Snorri apparently isn't blessed. Okay, now he's blessed. Good. So they are regenerating. They get hit by these flying units, then all these all these guys come swarming in, then they get attacked by, by flyers. But look, so back here, all these guys are getting frozen. Uh, Stentor has taken no net damage. Sure has taken no net damage, or sure. Uh, Snorri has taken no net damage. And then the ungeared, badly injured one is dead already. And that's the difference that gear makes. Um, so we've got, we've still got these three Jarls fighting. Uh, the giants are already routed just by the torrent of units they've been attacked by. But as you can see here, the Jarls just keep fighting. They're not taking damage. One of them has run here. Uh, but Stentor is still here and Snorri is still here. And they're just not taking damage on net because of that cold aura. Uh, Mictlan's troops are not immune to the cold aura, and they have very, very high defense skill, which is increased by the cold, and very high protection, which is increased by the cold. And they have the Vine Shield, so anybody attacking them in melee gets entangled, plus the AoE attack. And they are shock resistant, they're still susceptible to fire, so that is a weakness, but... Even so, uh, there's so much chaff here that the fire elementals actually can't get to them. Even this Nifl Giant down here... Since he didn't get hit by the, the flying charge, he's lasting a good long time, as are these up north. So overall, I'm looking at this and I'm going like, yeah, these guys can work. They do need some fire resist. That's uh, that's definitely something they need. But they can get that. Like, that won't be a huge problem. And once they get that, they will be capable of fighting very, very effectively against armies like this. So, lost an evil Jarl, that's unfortunate, but I feel like it can be done. Um, Halbathria, he took over with his little troops. I bounced off the bulwark, uh, 
mainly due to the the rear attack nightmares getting into my my e4s and killing them all off the e4 still got a respectable number of kills but the nightmares uh, these two nightmares swung around my flank because i didn't have appropriate flank protection because i'm a little bit short on troops uh, as you can see here, yep, they go, they zip down right around everybody and they get into the E4s and start killing them off, and they do that very, very effectively while the E4s are busy. Meanwhile, the infantry uh, breaks from, well, the the Giganti Hoplites break quite a bit later, but they uh, they break from the swarm, and then the E4s, two of the E4s got away, and two of them did, and three of them did not. So that was unfortunate. Uh, definitely, definitely highly unfortunate. So you can see the Giganti Hoplites do still doing really well, but there's just not enough of them. And when there are enough of them, there are lots of counters on the field. So, um, yeah, that's about all I can do at this point. Uh, still recruiting Archons. <sighs> I feel like I should be recruiting more Polar Marches because Thugs are going to be my only, my only hope here. But then that just means I have to forge gear for them, and the only gems that I have in any number are Earth at this point. Um, I can get some units that might help, but honestly, units are not the problem. Like, I have units. My units are good. It's, it's magic that's the problem. So, makes it rough for sure. Uh, what I am going to do is I am going to forge... Uh, some... I'm gonna start forging Dragon Helmet. I, I just don't have the Fire Gems is the thing. My fire income is garbage. Yeah, I think this is... I think this is definitely game. We're gonna keep fighting for a little bit, just to, if nothing else, so that the, the new players can... can see how they do in this kind of defensive war. But, uh... We'll see how it goes. I think we are gonna be the next team eliminated. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that Nasigen is still alive, to be honest. He might have a chance for a renaissance here if, uh, if Kosar playing Sarmatia can protect him for long enough. But we're going to see. I think if they come down here with this army, I think Stab of Manicles should be able to stop them. He won't be able to destroy that army, but he will be able to stop them and force them to scatter, I think. So, if they attack down here, that should inflict some pretty serious casualties. Uh, Spartan Kikates. Unfortunately, Spartan Kikates does not have a Vine Shield, which is a significant downgrade of his capabilities. He also doesn't have the Blessing, so his stats overall are lesser, but he does have Regeneration. He can still get his protection up to high levels. He's still Shock Resistant. He can make himself Fire Resistant, so he's still got things going for him, and he has High Magic Resistance, and he can, of course, Iron Will himself. So he's still got things going on. It's just, uh, it's just going to be a little bit harder for him, but Spartan Kikates is going to move down here and start seeing if he can give some people the business. I'm not moving the army along with him specifically because I don't want him to be HP routed, which he may be able to avoid otherwise since he has regeneration. And of course, Punchmaster is still romping around. I do want to get him a an amulet of anti-magic. Uh, I think probably what should happen is Orestes should also go over here. Drop those gems real quick and pick up that Amulet of Anti-Magic so that Punchmaster can grab it when you all meet up uh, here in Pania or somewhere. Yeah, we'll get it done. We'll do what we can. Uh, we'll use the Thugs and Super Combatants to hold off uh, inevitable destruction as much as possible, and we'll try to do something about these freaking elves romping around in our land, stealing all our shit, but not sure there's all that much that can be done about it. So, that is the state of the game. And uh, I'll see you all in turn 36. Okay, turn 36. Um, things aren't going fantastic. I did get another pair of Boots of the Messenger, and we've hit Construction Level 4, which is great. In terms of battles, uh, well, you know, it's not it's not going great. Uh, we're lots of raiding back and forth up in Belmar in Ulifa. In Ulifa, uh, the Nifl Thug Brigade has finally been deployed in all of its mighty glory. And they actually did very well. Um, they technically didn't win this battle, but watch how it goes. So they've got these uh, Nephil Giants up here. The Nephil Giants get, get pretty much wiped out by that charge. Actually, I think this is the one they won. So yeah, so these three partially geared, I have to emphasize that, they're not even fully geared. These three partially geared Jarls with their 10% regeneration, vine shields, etc. Um, they basically go in, they get totally surrounded by the armies of Miklan and they inflict tremendous damage. 
They are just cutting people up left, right, and center with their frost brands. They're freezing them with their auras. Uh, this is what happens if you go up against an evil Jarls without cold resistance. Now, the fire elementals were in a way a good idea because fire elementals do fire damage, which Nephils are weak against, but in another way, they're a bad idea because they are susceptible to cold. And that includes cold auras. So watch what happens. So this guy moves up instantly. He's up to 76 fatigue. And that happens because if we look here, this fire elemental, I think it's that one. Uh, so he's inflicting fatigue damage, heat fatigue, heat fatigue, heat fatigue, heat fatigue, cold fatigue. He instantly starts taking a lot of cold fatigue damage because the uh, the way these um the way these auras work is they make multiple rolls per round and every roll applies. So this is I believe this is all one round of cold fatigue damage and it all stacked up instantly and then he got stabbed by a frost brand which was of course increased and uh, just just got basically obliterated by the double hit. So fire elementals against Nephil Jarls go down really, really quickly. Uh, this guy is actually fatigued out. He's not, he's unable to move because he went over 100 fatigue just by being near the Nephil Jarls. Uh, and so the armies of Mictlan rout. Uh, and the Nephil Jarls are victorious and they haven't even taken hardly any damage except Sure down here got a never healing wound. So they're doing very, very well. Uh, in Amul, uh, my polar march, uh, Spartan Kikates, bounced a little raiding party. He did pretty well for himself. He cast his uh, his buffs. So after his buffs, magic resistance 24, prot 28, and I think he's also going to, yeah, temper flesh. So now he's regenerating, of course, from his flask of holy water and uh, taking 50% less damage from everything. And this is just basic infantry, so he runs in with his mace of eruption and he just starts beating on fools. Uh, he does have four reinvigoration, but he has eight encumbrance, which means that he is unfortunately still gaining fatigue as he fights. See, actually, I don't, I don't know. See, he's losing fatigue there. Yeah, he's gaining fatigue net. So every time he attacks, he gains four fatigue, which is unfortunate, but eh, I, I would love to, uh, I'd love to have more reinvigoration on him. What he needs is boots of the messenger, but unfortunately I can't really free up a slot for a girdle of might. He would need both Girdle of Might and Boots of Reinvigoration to be fatigue neutral. So in any case, so he won there, my god won here, and I wiped out the independence here. So I'm now pushing pretty hard back against uh, Ermor. I do still have these problems. There was a hilarious battle in Griffin Rock. We have to watch this battle. So watch what happens here. Ulm has sent in their army of, of dudes to attack one Gigya. And all the Gigya does is summon the dead. And watch what happens. So this Gigya is just spamming out zombies and skeletons and zombies and skeletons. And these Jotun hurlers up here are throwing rocks. And since the target is so big and so close, they're scoring a kill like every round. They're just throwing the, their freaking rocks in. They've got, and they've got infinite ammo because they're on the walls. So they don't just have two boulders each. Um, so they just continually throw boulders and kill people pretty much every round while the, uh, the skeletons and zombies continue to do their skeleton and zombie thing. Finally, finally the troops of Ulm break through and then they rout instantly. Um, they've just taken enough damage, they have to start making morale checks and they run. So one Gigya, one Gigya defends Griffin Rock. 35 kills on six Jotun hurlers. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous and hilarious. I... Phew. I love it. I just love it. Uh, they did take over Digmore again, and Van continues to raid as well as Barito. So we are we are getting kind of getting kind of chipped away, unfortunately. Lots more battles down here. Arco's army bounced off of an Inari blob, killed almost all of the Sarmatian cataphracts involved, but the Inaris just skeleton spammed them to death. We've seen that before. So I do have Paraphus down here. I'm actually going to take those boots off him because I need them. Uh, to give them to Cabriones, who I will rename something cooler once we have some gear for him. We're forging for him. We're forging a Dwarven Hammer. We're forging a Mace of Eruption and a Flask of Holy Water. Up here, we're forging a Copper Plate for him to wear. And we're also going to forge... We are also going to forge him a Girdle of Might. So that should give him enough reinvigoration. Six plus the... That should give him enough to be uh, fatigue neutral. And, 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 he could also use... 
Uh, he could really use a charcoal shield, but that is going to take some more fire gems. So, yeah, I'm going to alchemize. I'm going to do it. I'm going to alchemize some of my air gems because I need five fire gems. There we go. Then I need a charcoal shield, which takes earth two. So I need you, actually, to forge me a charcoal shield. So that will give him fire shield without him having to cast it, which will be pretty great. Spartan Kikates is moving down here to fight this army, which has the Bane Lord. And I don't believe the Bane Lord was geared with anything terribly dangerous. Um, let me see if I'm remembering that right. So the Bane Lord has... Actually, I lied. The Bane Lord is geared pretty dangerously. He's got a Coral Blade, a Charcoal Shield, Armor of Knight, two Braces of Protection. So, ooh, they've got Construction 6 already. Unfortunate. And the two Braces of Protection means its defense skill is super high. Okay. That's fine. So that... Actually, Spartan Kikates would probably have some trouble with. He hits really, really hard with the Mace of Eruption, but I don't know. He might be able to take it. Don't really want to whisk it, though, so I'm going to bounce him back towards there, and Punchmaster is going to come over this way in case they move up to stop the Bane Lord. Uh, meanwhile, Demukos here is going to lead an army down into Pania, and we're just going to kind of fight back as best we could. But there is a Melissa making her way towards us in order to heal Punchmaster of his blindness and his limp, which will be fantastic. And we're just going to see what we can do. We're losing a lot of territory to these Storm Demons up here. Uh, Stab of Manicles is going to have to kind of come up here and be our, uh, be our bulwark against all of that. He does have... Uh, he doesn't have Shock Resistance. Ooh. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah, that's not going to go well with all those Storm Demons then. Um... Stab of Manicles needs to get over here, and I actually need to forge another Copper Plate, because he's got to have that Shock Resist. Yeah, I can't believe I almost overlooked that. Okay, well, change of, quick change of plans. That's fine. I don't care about this province much anyway. Uh, so yeah, that is the turn. I know this is a, uh, a fairly brief little turn overview, but we'll see. Uh, Niflheim is under siege, but these Nifl Jarls might be able to break that siege, or they can break this siege. Uh, the capital is not broken yet, and Niflheim has said that he plans to f stand defensively inside the fort with his Gigyas. Which sounds like a good idea to me. And we'll just, uh, we'll keep on carrying on. We're not out of this fight yet. We may be able to pull it off. If we can pull off some dipl diplomatic chicanery somehow. So, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in turn 37. Alright, folks. It is turn 37, and, um... Well, this turn... This turn actually went really, really badly. Uh, we see here we've got these three, our three uh, favorite Jarls here with their shock resist and all that good stuff. All over here along with the god of Niflheim, AI level Doomstacks. And they came up against this Kalem army and you'd think, you'd think with their shock resist and all that they would be all set up to take this on. Um, and unfortunately that turned out to not entirely be the case. Um, the thunder strikes and all those were those were like bad. Like that one that one Jarl got uh, got I think basically I think basically Snorri got annihilated. Uh, th but the thing that actually did for us, well, was the trample. That was that was what did for us. Um, <sighs> trampling is a mechanic that I don't have a fantastic handle on. Oh, and he also got stabbed in the head with an ice lance there, which didn't help. But trampling, and you see trample did 17 points of damage right there. So trampling is this mechanic whereby a larger unit moves into a smaller unit's square, and there's an opposed roll of, I believe, uh, I think, believe there's a morale roll and a defense roll involved. And if you fail the rolls, you, if you succeed, you're moved and you take one point of damage. But if you fail, um, you take a ton of damage based on the difference between your sizes. Now you'd think that Nifl Jarls would not take much damage from Trample because they're only one size point less than size 6 air elementals and such, but that appears to not be the case. Um, so one of the Jarls just got wiped out by Trample immediately. Um, and then the others back here, AI level Doomstacks is surrounded and not caring a whole lot and just kind of eating these people one by one. But as the fight goes on, more and more trampling happens, and you can see that, you know, uh, I can't hardly catch him, he's being trampled so fast. The speed at which you can trample somebody is related to combat speed. So you can see he's already taken quite a bit of damage, actually. 
he came into this fight with like a hundred, and he's down to forty-four from being trampled. Stentor is safe because he's surrounded by, you know, locked up Spirehorn warriors, but it is not, not going nearly as well as one would hope. And now the Nifl Jarls are inflicting a ton of kills, but mainly they are inflicting kills on cheap garbage summoned units. You can see. Surrey now is down to 24 hit points, despite having regenerated 30 or 40 hit points in this time, because the Ice Elementals keep trampling him. And his attacks keep hitting things that are not the full-size Ice Elementals, so he gets trampled to death. And then up here, Stentor is on fire and doesn't care. He's surrounded by people. He's doing fine. Uh, AI level Doomstacks is frozen from the cold ore of this Ice Elemental because, of course, he's cold-blooded. And so he is fatigued out and uh, almost certainly isn't coming back. And Stentor is having a good old time surrounded by birds and wolves, but as soon as one of these one of these trampolies gets in, yep, there he starts getting trampled around. Now he's taking a whole bunch of damage. And being on fire is slowing his regeneration significantly, so it's uh it's a bad scene. So Stentor is gonna stand here, get a whole lot of kills for quite a while, until he basically gets pushed out of his meat shield of birds. And then, uh, yep, there he goes. See how quickly he got shoved around? And he's down to 15 health already. So yeah, I... This is actually my fault. We designed these guys together. And I underestimated the effect of the trample mechanics. So, my bad. Uh, meanwhile... AI level Doomstacks does not really seem to be regenerating. It's because he's up to his current max hit points. So he's just kind of sitting here, and nothing much is changing. I'm not quite sure how he died. I think he may have hit the... I think he may have actually gone to the turn timer limit. Just because he's surrounded by these units that can barely hurt him. Um, but going to the turn timer limit, like... He doesn't care. They're, they're all just spamming Ghost Wolves as hard as they can. That's hilarious. Skele spam air style. Yeah, I guess he must have gone to the turn timer limit. Because I can't see how he would possibly be killed by what's here. We'll see if the, uh, if the mages route. Which I imagine they should. At some point, these guys must run. They sure do love to spam wolves. Alright, I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, so yeah, we hit the turn timer limit, everybody started to route, but uh, AI level Doomstacks, it looks like, was completely fatigued out, and he only has combat speed 8 anyway. So probably what this means is he didn't get off the, uh, the battlefield in time. Because all the mindless units are disintegrating, and vanishing, because all the mages have run, but... Yeah, and he got he got hung up on this air elemental that hadn't disintegrated yet. And since his weapon isn't magic, that took him like six or eight rounds to get through. Wow. Oh god, that's annoying. Yep, and he was killed by the turn timer. Okay then. So, uh, that is all of Niflheim's last hope gone. Basically, that was here in Pergamy. Um, and they're just gone. So, Niflheim's got Skelospam in Niflheim itself. The fort is broken. And I've got a pretty decent army down here. And a little bit of an army assembling here. But, uh... Oof. We are, let's put it this way, we are not happy campers. We're going to Earth Power up and drop. Oh, what'll we drop? 
Yeah, Legions of Steel. And actually, I'm not going to put these guys in lines. I'm going to put them in boxes. So they're easy to buff. And we'll get the mages right up like that. And yeah, summon earth power, legions of steel, cast spells. We're moving Periphus down to do what we can. Uh, we've got Stab of Manicles equipped with copper plate to deal with storm demons up here. He, he's, he's tough enough, he can probably do some decent damage. So he's going to be pushing back against Veritos to make sure they don't make any progress. This army is in a bad place and a bad way and needs to retreat. These storm demons are being hugely problematic. Uh, we've got plenty of Arco troops trying to push south against the raiding elves, but that is a hard call at the best of times. Uh, overall, it's just going, uh, mm, let's say badly. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say badly. We are definitely going down. We're doing our best. It looks like Hinnom, hilariously, is now attacking Ermor. <laughs> I don't know why, because, you know, well, Hinnom's lost their capital uh, to Lanka. So, and it looks like the, uh, the Fomorians are starting to roll in here. I'm not sure whether they're rolling in on me or on, uh, Saromatia and Baratos. Probably me, I would imagine. I think what's happening is they're coming in to vulture away a few provinces as I die, which is fair. That's what you do. So, we will, um, I've got Pilates and Genocidocles over here. Genocidocles is still gearing up. Uh, Pilates is fully geared, and he's moving down to join the army in Amul. And we'll just see how long we can last. So, turn 27, third, that was turn 37, I'm sorry, and I will see you all in turn 38.